In this video, I'm going to be showing you a quick optimization that you can use with Enumerate. And to get started, let me just show you what we're going to be testing. So when you have an enumeration, usually you type in for i and value in Enumerate, whatever list you want to enumerate or whatever iterable you want to enumerate. So if we want to enumerate, let's say a, b, and c, we can do that with enumerate. And when we print i, and the value, we're going to get 0 a 1 b 2 c. So it effectively enumerated the list and using enumerate returns an enumerate object. And you can verify that by printing enumerate that list, you'll get this enumerate object printed to the console, and it's supposed to be incredibly efficient. But we can also change this to a list. So you can create a list from that enumeration. And you'll get a list of tuples back. So that's what enumerate looks like when you actually print it out bare. But there's a small detail when using enumerate that you can use to make it faster. And that is defining a start. So if you wanted to start at one instead of at zero, you can define a start, which will group the first element with one and so on. I've seen a lot of people on the internet argue that this is actually quite confusing to read. So a lot of people prefer to do i plus one instead of providing a start. The only issue I have with this is that each time you loop through the list, you need to perform this minor calculation. So does this minor calculation really make a difference? Well, I've prepared a quick test to find out just that. So here we have the enumerate function that takes a list of values and it returns to us a list. So we create a temporary list. And inside here, all we're doing is enumerating this list of values and starting it at one. And then to perform some calculation, we're appending to the temporary list. So we can return that temporary list. And the normal function does exactly the same thing, except it does not provide a start. It just calculates i plus one for each iteration and then appends it to the temporary list. So they both do the exact same thing with the exception of start and i plus one. So to time them, I'm going to import from time it the time it function, then I'm going to create the if name is equal to main check. And I'm going to create a list of 50 numbers to time the normal implementation without the start. I created a variable called normal time. And then I timed that function with the 50 numbers in it. So we have 50 elements that we're going to loop through and append to a new list using enumerate. And I'm performing this test 1 million times, then I'm doing the exact same thing for the enumerate start time. So as you can see here, we actually have the start is equal to one, as we've defined up here. And just to make sure that we're giving the same result in each one of these functions, I created a simple print statement that says output is the same. And it checks that the normal function is equal to the enumerate function because we don't want to get back different results, which creates an inaccurate test. But if we run this and wait a couple of seconds, you'll see that start equals one was slightly faster, about two tenths of a second faster than i plus one. And no matter how many times I run this test, that will always be the case. And in Python 3.11, this is a much smaller difference than in Python 3.10. Now I'm running this in Python 3.10. And you'll see immediately that we even save more time there. So it's quite a minor optimization, which can possibly save you a lot of time in your scripts. But you need to judge that for yourself, whether it's worth to save two tenths of a second or more depending on the operations you are computing. And as always, I recommend you test these optimizations in your own scripts before jumping to any conclusions. But that's actually all I wanted to share in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below if I miss something or if there's something that I should have added. But as always, with all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.